This is Maximus. Okay, so I want to make this perfectly clear. No, I, Maximus, am not saying that the Air India jet suffered a dual engine failure. You know, I'm officially on the record. That's not taking a side on this issue until all the facts are in. However, according to so many brand new Boeing 787 experts on social media, that's exactly what happened. And hell, I don't know. Seriously, it indeed may have happened. But I thought we would discuss that theory from the what-if side of things, as in, what if that indeed did happen? So not stating it as fact, but exploring the idea in general, I wanted to investigate what could have caused it, and what in general could cause a dual engine failure on any modern commercial airline, and what are the only possible reasons we know that a jet airliner can suffer a dual engine jet failure. Well, first of all, jet airliners are designed with highly reliable engines and redundant systems to minimize the risk of a dual engine failure. But such incidents, while extremely rare, have happened, and recently, and possibly in the case of Air India, and most likely in the case of Jeju Air in 2024. So as we continue to wait for the Air India investigation to find the actual cause of the crash, I thought we would take on one of the most postulated internet theories of the crash of the only 787 in history to suffer a total hull loss fatal crash. And that of course is the theory of the dual engine failure. Again, something with odds so slim you're more likely to win the lottery while simultaneously getting struck by lightning while getting a tuggy from Marilyn Monroe at the same time. How exciting that sounds. However, with that said, there are only a finite number of possibilities that a major commercial airliner can suffer a dual engine failure. And here are a few. Oh, and to all you Boeing haters out there leaving empty tequila bottles in the fuselage while extremely careless, is not on the list of causes of dual engine failures. And on that topic, about 99% of reasons for dual engine failures will never be related to an aircraft manufacturing incident. Usually they are caused by outside forces or maintenance issues. However, they could be the cause of GE or Rolls-Royce, which manufactures the engines. So they may need to be on the worry watch for a while. Anyway, with that said, so, the first and foremost common reason for a jet airliner to suffer a dual engine failure. Well, they're generally related to what are called common mode failures, meaning an event that affects both engines simultaneously. So, leading off our list at number one is no surprise, fuel starvation issues, especially fuel starvation. Well, first of course, we have the no-duh category in fuel starvation mode. And that, of course, is the crew either failed to put in enough gas or miscalculated a proper amount related to the distance needed to travel. So that's the no-duh category. But next, you get into the mechanical or maintenance areas or fuel leaks or debris called FOD or foreign object debris, obstructions in the fuel system preventing fuel from reaching the engines. Also, you can have fuel contamination, which can occur anywhere from the petroleum plant to the storage tanks at the airport or the truck that's pumping it, or even the condition of the aircraft itself. Are the tanks, lines, and hoses well-maintained and free from contamination? All critical to keeping the aviation fuel clean and flowing. Then you can have icing, where ice crystals in the fuel can disrupt fuel flow to the engines, leading to the engine shutting down or flaming out. Sometimes low temperatures during flight can cause ice crystals to form in the fuel, potentially blocking fuel lines, as was seen in British Airways Flight 38 at Heathrow Airport in 2008, when a Boeing 777-ER had a hard landing and overshot the runway. In that case, ice had formed within the fuel system from water that occurred naturally in the fuel, while the aircraft operated with low fuel levels over a long period, and the localized fuel temperatures were in an area described as what they call sticky, leading to a blocking of fuel flow in the fuel oil heat exchangers in both engines. So ice is a problem. However, in flaming hot India, I think we can rule that one out. Well, now that we covered the fuel system, that brings us to the engines themselves. And again, the term FOD or foreign object debris damage is always going to be a bad day for a good engine. 
But coming in at number one, of course, those pesky bird strikes. As in the case of the aforementioned Juju air crash, flying through a flock of birds, especially during critical phases like takeoff or landing, can cause damage to both engines, potentially leading to a loss of thrust. You might remember the miracle on the Hudson. Well, that's a well-known example of this. But thankfully, Tom Hanks, uh, I mean, Sully Sullivan, saved the day. And even though bird strikes have come up as a topic in the Air India crash, so far there has been no evidence of that, but the investigation will bear that out. But another type of FOD that has soiled more than a few passengers and pilots jockeys alike is volcanic ash. Volcanic ash can severely damage jet engines by melting and coating the engine's internal components with glass-like deposits, potentially causing the engines to shut down completely. Past incidents like British Airways Flight 9 and KLM Flight 867 involved multiple engine failures due to volcanic ash encounters. But as far as we know, again, between the airport and where the Air India plane came down just a few hundred meters, there were no volcanoes, so that's probably not the cause. However, another type of engine fog that has indeed turned off a few engines in the past was due to high concentrations of small ice crystals and very cold air at high altitudes that can cause ice to accumulate inside the engine's core, potentially leading to temporary power loss, stalls, flame out, or even engine blade damage. Or as in the case of Taka Airlines, they ingested more water than a plane had ever ingested. But still that badass one-eyed Captain Carlos Dardano brought that brand new 737 down like butter on a cracker beside a Louisiana bayou. So if it's not fod, birds, ice, volcanoes, or dirty gas, what's our next area of concern? Well, that brings us to the very taboo subject, yes, dare we say, pilot error. Because pilots can sometimes forget to switch fuel tanks or select the wrong tank altogether or fail to monitor fuel levels leading to fuel starvation. Or worse, which has happened in history, a shutting down the wrong engine. In the stress of an emergency, a pilot could potentially, and has in reality, shut down the working engine instead of the faulty one. Pilot could also use the engine fire extinguisher, thinking there was a fire when there was none that would kill the engines, or even mistakenly putting the throttles to idle. So there are lots of miscalculations pilots can make to cause a dual engine shutdown. However, I can't overstate this enough. Those cases are very, very rare. Okay, so we'll leave the pilots alone for now and head on down to the maintenance department, where unfortunately the grease monkeys have been the cause of many past disasters. Usually unknowing, however, sometimes due to blatant carelessness. And I'm not going to mention all the possibilities that can occur when a plane is in the maintenance shop, but let's just say there's a lot can go wrong if you don't service the engine by the book. In all seriousness, and I know this phrase is redundantly annoying at this point, but flying is indeed the safest mode of travel. However, while statistically extremely unlikely, it is still theoretically possible for both engines to fail independently at the same time. But like I say, it is incredibly rare. And again, I'm not saying that the Air India 787 suffered a dual engine failure or not, nor am I saying any of what we discussed so far happened to Air India. We are just discussing how a dual engine failure could occur. So I'm not making any conclusions on the Air India crash in this video. I personally have no idea if it suffered a dual engine failure or not, or what the cause was of the crash exactly. I'm waiting for the report. However, I just wanted to discuss one of those theories from the thousands of brand new Boeing 787 experts out there on social media and play the what if game with you. And that is what would happen if both engines failed and what could have possibly caused it. The rest, well, I'll leave up to history. And with that, I shall ask you to meet me down in the comments section. And always like, and if you feel to, subscribe. And until next time, as always, yes, this is Maximus.